reasons that you could have high iron. Um, one is if you have a genetic predisposition for hemochromatosis or um, you have one or two parents that you've inherited a gene for from that. Um, and this is actually something that I think is, I really nerd out about working at Inside Trackers that we've helped so many people identify that they have one of like maybe that they inherited um, one SNP for hemochromatosis because their ferritin levels are off the chart and they've never eaten any type of meat that doesn't show up in their other markers and their other iron group markers. Um, and so that's one reason. If you have chronically like very elevated levels of ferritin and you aren't a chronic red meat eater, um, there's no real explanation as to why you have so much iron available in your body. That could be one indication for it. Um, and again, no. I just love that. Sorry to interrupt. And so if someone did um, have really high ferritin, didn't eat a lot of meat um, and wanted to check if they were, if they did have hemochromatosis, what, what, would, what is the next step in that? Like, how would they determine? Um, yeah. So we at Inside Tracker have a DNA test now. Before we had that, though, a lot of people, that would be inspiration for them to go and try out another one of the DNA testing services to see. And that really inspired them to do it, that one marker. And then they found out that they had inherited something like that and then went back and had a conversation with their family. And other family members were also pretty high in their ferritin levels, um, which is, I think, just super cool how that is inspiring you to continue on a health journey. Um, another reason that ferritin could be high, it is possible to have high ferritin levels if you consume a very large amount of iron. Um, it's pretty difficult for the body to get there just from eating, let's say, a lot of red meat because our body is super smart in, the, in that it can basically drastically reduce the amount of iron that can be absorbed in the GI tract um, if we have enough in our diet. Um, if you're taking a supplement and you do not need one, though, that is definitely something that can push your ferritin level higher because in supplement form, you are getting a very high dose of iron at once that is in the form your body is able to absorb most effectively. Um, and that can just kind of brush by all of those protective mechanisms in the GI tract that would otherwise slow that down. So checking to make sure if you're taking a multivitamin, if you're a man or a postmenopausal woman, there is very little need that you would uh, require, or probably very little likelihood that you have a need for a ferritin in a supplement. So definitely check that out. Um, also, some foods, again, are fortified with iron. So checking to see the foods that you eat most consistently, if they have iron in them, um, finishing the box of whatever that is and maybe not replacing it. And then the third thing that could cause high iron is if you have, or high ferritin levels, if you have inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, and this is another cool mechanism that our body has that's protective. Um, we test HSCRP and white blood cells, uh, both white blood cell count, but the five different types of white blood cells as well. Um, and if you have a high level of inflammation, that's a good indication that your body potentially is trying to protect you from something. And um, one of those ways that our body is protective is it pulls iron out of our bloodstream. So you'll see your serum iron level drop as well as your transferrin saturation, which is really the protein that shuttles um, iron around the body. And it puts those with ferritin, which is now in this kind of storage form that if there is some sort of invader, then they're not able to access that ferritin or that iron stored with ferritin, which is gonna impede their ability to grow and thrive and proliferate in your body because that invader is also gonna need iron to be able to do that. Um, so if you have high levels of HSCRP or high white blood cells, um, and you also see a really big increase in your ferritin level, that could be falsely high just because your body's going through this protective mechanism. Um, so all of those things to say, ways that you can lower your ferritin level if you're, inflama if you're inflamed for some reason, if you, your body is mounted an inflammatory response, figuring out why, why that's high and trying to bring it down. Um, but the other two, there's really no way to get iron out of your body other than losing blood. <laughs> so if you have very high levels of iron, um, donating blood is actually an amazing way that you can bring those iron levels down. And we have um, some great blogs on uh, one of our employees. He was testing and uh, 
noticed his ferritin level was high, realized he had one of the uh, genes for hemochromatosis or inherited one of them from one of his parents, um, and repeatedly was using Insight Tracker to measure his ferritin levels and using that as an indicator for when it was time for him to go and give wow. blood. Um, Bloodletting is what that would have been called a long time ago if you were <laughs> donating, but now you can donate to a really great cause and help somebody out um, that may need a blood transfusion. Thank you.